name and worship the Lord. Love y'all.
sacrifice of praise to you, Lord Jesus, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Ghost all over this place this morning. Lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Declare his authority. Declare his power this morning. Father, we honor you. Lord, we bless you, Lord. We give you the glory, Lord. We magnify your wonderful name today. Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, we recognize, Lord, what you have done at the cross, Lord. Father, we thank you this morning for your goodness, Lord. For your wonderful grace, your wonderful grace. Praise the Lamb of God. Praise the Lamb of God. Praise the Lamb of God. Lord, you are holy this morning. You are holy, Lord. Lord. You're worthy of all of our praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Turn to your neighbor this morning and say, ain't God good? (laughs) Ain't God good? good. Hallelujah. You may be seated this morning. Thank you, praise and worship team. Thank you this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Lord bless you. Lord love you this morning. Good to see each and every one here this morning. Good to have Sister Carolyn back from her surgery. Praise Good to have the aunt back this morning. Praise the Lord. Bless you guys. And uh, got uh, Claire. No, not Claire. Clara and, and Calvina. And so good to have these lovely ladies this morning. Praise the Lord. Leonard better line up and stay in shape today. <laughs> Larry, amen. And so Children's Church, you're dismissed this morning. Thank you guys for coming out. Got Christopher in the house this morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Stand and testify if you can, brother. Tell what the good Lord is. Amen. Preach on, brother. Preach on. Does it look like he's had surgery, folks? (laughs) Well, glory. No, sir. No, sir. 
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Woo, ain't God good this morning, folks. Praise the Lord. Good to have Sister Lynette back with us. Amen. Missed her this morning. All the home folk today, Lord bless you. Lord love you. God is busy. God is doing great things. Amen. Amen. So let's remember service tonight. Uh, come back out. I encourage you to come back and uh, support Teen Challenge, the women's ministry side of that. And so if you know someone that's struggling with drugs or alcohol or violence or abuse, uh, bring them out tonight. doesn't have to be a, necessarily a woman tonight. Bring a man tonight if they're struggling, going through some dark times. Teenagers are struggling through some things. Tonight is the night to get them in the house of God. Amen. Don't lay out tonight. Get them here. Get, get your family here tonight. Let God do a mighty work in their life. Let him heal the mind. Amen. Let him heal the heart that's broken tonight. Praise God. Praise God. And then after that, we're going to go in the back and have a meal. We get to feed the ladies tonight. And they said they feed, they eat like a bunch of men at Thanksgiving. So don't skimp on groceries tonight. Amen. Bring enough to feed it a lot. So do you have something, Sister Donna? A semi hit your booth? Wow, what a miracle. You okay? Praise the Lord. Wow. Aren't you glad God never sleeps or slumbers? He's always on time. We never know. He's my Lord. Let's just lift our hands this morning. Just thank him. Just whoo. Glory to God, Father. We just recognize, Lord, your miracle. We recognize that you are still the Alpha, the Omega. You're still, Lord, in the healing business. You're still in the protecting business today. Father, watching over your people of going to and fro, Lord. Father, we just thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord, and your angels that encamp round about your people. Father, we give you the praise and we just thank you, Lord, for all that you do, Lord. By the unseen hand, we ask it in Jesus' name name amen praise the lord praise the lord good to have each and every one out this morning congratulations to all those that have graduated high school we want to keep praying for all of them today praise the lord so lord bless you lord love you uh let's go to the word of god this morning i um i was preaching a couple sermons on uh, don't blow it keep the faith y'all remember that uh well, I kind of want to do a spin-off on that one today. We've talked about a couple things on it. We're going to have through some storms of life. But this week, I just felt like the Holy Spirit kept bringing me back to this one word. Bringing me back to this one word. And I, I, I built up on that foundation of that. And it's called hold fast. Hold fast. And so I want to build on that subject. So, Father, we pray right now, Lord, that you would anoint your preacher today. Lord, that you would anoint the ears. Lord, that you would anoint the listener today. Lord, that you would stir, Lord, a spirit, Lord, of whole fastness, Lord, in our lives today. Father, we pray for a spirit of God, Lord, that's going to rise up inside of us, a boldness, Lord, and a courage as never before. Father, we pray the goodness of God right now that you begin to speak, Lord, in me and through me with the word of God today. Lord, we love you for it and we give you all the praise in Jesus name amen amen and didn't sister Dunning do a great job last Sunday morning for Mother's Day wow what a challenging message challenging message it was today and so I, I look at these here so turn with me to the book of Acts the third chapter the book of Acts I want to lay just a little foundation here before we get into the really the the meteor side of the message today but in Acts the third chapter down about verse number 5, Acts 3 and 5, we see the, the lay man that was laid at Gate Beautiful and Peter and John went to, the, went to the temple that morning as their hour of prayer and praise. And he says in verse 5, actually in verse 4 he says, And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, Look on us. Folks, we have something to offer the world. 
We have something to offer the needy or the poor or the hurting this morning. Peter and John had just got baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. They knew what was burning on the inside of them. And so they said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them. That word gave heed right there. He gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them. Now, he might have been expecting alms, or he might have been expecting money, or he might have been expecting something, but the point is, he was looking, he was expecting something. So I want to encourage you this morning, when you got up out of your comfy bed this morning, and you come to church, and you spent the gas to get here, and you took time to get here, did you come expecting to see something? Did you expect to hear something from God this morning? I'm expecting to leave here, Sister Dunning, better than the way I showed up. I'm expecting to leave here with more than what I brought in this morning. I'm expecting something to happen in my life. Oh, my Lord. He says, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. Such as you have, that is something that you possess. It is something that you own. It is something that is in your power to give out this morning. It is something that you have that you can do with it what you want to do with it. God has placed that on the inside of you. He said so. He said, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bone received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked. And he entered in with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God, kind of like Brother Chris did this morning. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Come on, somebody. It's okay to do this in church. It was happening outside the temple. It can happen inside the temple. He said, and all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he who had sat for alms at the beautiful temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what they had just happened to him. So we see here this story, how it's lining up right here, how God is, is speaking to them, said he expected to receive something. He said, and he believed it. He had a hold fastness about it. he was expecting something to be received. Now, I like to receive something, but I want to retain something. If somebody lays something on me, I want to take hold of that. He, he had to take hold of the truth that was given him. And church, we got to exercise our faith this morning and believing that what God has promised us, he's also able to perform it. So we got to receive and hold fast to the promise of God, hold fast to what God is offering us today. See, hold fast is a principle. It's a principle. He said, if you stand fast, you don't change your mind about it. You've got to have a principle, and our world today is throwing us so many curveballs that you've got to know what the truth is or you'll be swayed by it. Or you'll be swinging at anything the pitcher throws at it. You've got to know what is right on target today, folks. He said, if you stand fast, you don't change your mind about it, even though people are trying to persuade you to change your mind. Hello, that's a good principle. There's a lot of people from the influences from the world today, the influences from the devil, the influences from our own fleshly body that's trying to influence us. I mean, if you'd have listened to your body this morning, you'd have probably sitting home in your recliner in your PJs watching us live on Facebook. But because something inside of you was stirring, say, no, I'm a steadfast, I'm an unshakable, born-again believer, and it's my responsibility is to get up and be in the house of God like he told me to. Amen. It's good preaching already this morning. I'm sure Christopher, after having surgery, Carolyn, after having surgery, and it'd probably like to just be home in her PJ recliner saying, oh, poor pitiful me. But the, Chris told me, he said, when I get out, I'm going to be in church on Sunday morning. He was expecting it. He was expecting it to be here. 
And so we see this here. Even though there's people that are still trying to push their agendas. There's people that are still, but you've got to do it. You've got to push past their agenda and get back on your agenda. You've got to push past what they're trying to present. So let's go to 1 Timothy. Now, I'm going somewhere this morning. 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. 1 Timothy 4 and verse 12. 1 Timothy 4 and 12. He said, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity, till I come give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by the prophecy, by the laying on the hand of the prophet, and meditate upon these things to give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all, and take heed unto thyself, unto the doctrine, continue, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and save them that hear thee. There is a lot at stake about being steadfast and continuing what God has called us to do. Eternity, eternity is based on what you stand for, what you stand against. He, so there's two words here. Number one is verse 14, neglect. Neglect is the opposite of being diligent. Neglect, it means, it means to be dis, disinterested. It means being unenthusiastic about it. It means to be uh, 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 un... Uh, boy, sometimes I wish I could read my own writing. <laughs> Unconcerned about something or becoming to a place of just being idle. That's the opposite of being diligent. He said, neglect not. He's telling you, don't get in, caught up in being negligent. Don't get caught up in being enthusiastic about what God has called you to do. And then if we look at the other side of it, he said, I want you to continue in them because that is what diligent means. It means to be consistent. It means to be uh, 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 studious. It means to be uh, unrelenting and tireless and industrious. Be that eager beaver type of mentality of a person. God has called us to have a spirit of whole fastness in our... I like the old Randall Newby version. Have some good old-fashioned stick to about us. Stay with it, amen. Stay with what God... Stay with God. Stay with God this morning. So Paul was telling Timothy, he said, no matter what people are trying to do, he said, you hold fast in what you know. You continue to keep doing in what's been given to you today. You keep, he, got, he said, it's going to save yourself and it's going to save others. Folks, that is one of the most important lines in the Word of God this morning. Save yourself. Save yourself and save others. That's the business that we're in. And for us to be, and for us to save ourselves, we've got to be consistent in following Jesus. Consistent, 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 being persistent, being studious, being unrelenting, have that unrelenting faith about us, that drive, that drives you to be courageous. That drive about you, that encourage you to move on. He said, I want you to, I want you to be diligent. I want you to cling to. I want you to take a firm grasp of. He said, I want you to grasp tightly unto Christ this morning. Have that old-fashioned bulldog mentality. That we're going to be relentless and we're not going to let go. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to bite in. And I'm going to stay. Come on. That's the kind, for, there's a lot of influences from the world right now that is trying to deter you, trying to tempt you to throw in the towel and just quit and say, is it worth it, honey? It's worth every bit of it. Amen. No time to quit. So when you look in Deuteronomy, I want to lay a couple others here. Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter. Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter. He lays a little bit more than we're going to get on a little bit deeper in just a moment. Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter. Deuteronomy 10 and verse 20. 
Deuteronomy 10 and 20. Look here what he says. He says, For the land whither thou goest in to possess it, is it not as the land of Egypt, and whence you came out, and where thou sowest thy seed, and waterest it with thy foot as the garden of earth? But the land whither you go to possess it, I'm in Levin, ain't I? I knew that didn't sound right. 10 and 12, 10 and 12, Deuteronomy 10 and 12. He said, And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord require of thee? What is the Lord expecting from you? Well, I just go to church on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock and get out about noon. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's all that's required from me. I give my 10%, no more, no less. Get quiet in this third Presbyterian church this morning. What is the Lord expecting from you? That's what the question asked. Aren't you wish, don't you wish I'd have stayed in heaven? Huh? Oh, the blessings are over here. Yeah, but if you want the blessings, something's got to be required of you. Just like, just like Peter and John said, you've got to fasten your eyes up on us. Hello, if you, want, if you want to be touched by God, you've got to look to him. You've got to fasten your eyes up on him and stay focused up on him. He says, what does the Lord require or expect of thee but to do this? He said, I want you to, number one, I want you to fear the Lord. I want you to walk in all of his ways. I want you to love him. I want you to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Anything less won't do. You can't halfway do it. Jesus didn't halfway do it at the cross. He didn't halfway do it in the Garden of Gethsemane. He didn't halfway die for you. Honey, he went all the way. If you're going to be you and I, we got to be steadfast and say, God, I'm going to love you with all of my heart, all of my body, all of my soul, and all of my strength, and all of my substance. Hallelujah. Because that's what God requires. Verse 10, 13. He said that to keep the commandments of the Lord and keep his statutes, which I command thee this day, watch this, for your good. If you want God's best, and you, this is what he said, I'm, you, you do this for yourself. That's good stuff right there. Go to 11 now. 11.22. For if you shall diligently, there's a word again, diligently, Keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all of ways, and to cleave. The word cleave there means hold fast. Hold fast. And to cleave to him. Church, you better have a tight grip on the Lord this morning. Something that's not. You better know what you got a hold of this morning. Because if something slips. Hello. Hello. You better know what you're holding on to this morning. He said, I want you to cleave. I want you to hold on. I want you to cleave to God. He said, then, look at that big old word, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and you shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Whoo, see, it pays off, church. Don't hold on to Jesus loosely this morning. You can't... It, if you're a casual Christian, you'll probably wind up a Christian casualty. Hello? He said, I want you to cleave. Because he said, when you're holding on to God, and you're holding fast, and you're not giving in when the things come against you, he said, that's then when God is going to start moving and start destroying all the enemies round about you. That's when God's going to show up, show out, and show off on your behalf. That's when God is going to give you every place where you put the sole of your feet, so you shall tread upon. It shall be yours. Somebody get happy this morning. God wants to bless you, but our part is we got to hold on to him. We got to hold fast, stay firmly planted in the word of God. There shall no man 
be able to stand before you. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land, and you shall tread upon as the Lord has said unto you. Wow. Hold fast. Hold fast. I'm, I'm just getting warmed up this morning. I'm still on my introduction. God is telling, God is telling us this morning to hold on to faith. Hold on to your faith this morning. We can go into Joshua. We can go into Joshua if you want, but I won't go there this morning. Joshua 22 and 5. Joshua 23, 3 verses 3 through 11, actually through 14. I won't take time to go for that. He said, but the word cleave this morning. He said, we've got to follow. We've got to cleave. We've got to be diligently. We've got to be obedient. We have got to be a devouting, our, devoting ourselves to, to follow that which is God and to serve him with all of our might. Sometimes we get away from that word devoted. Hello. Well, I'm a devoted husband. Yeah, but we don't spend the time with our wife like we should. Well, I'm a devoted wife. Yeah, but we're not meeting the needs of the husband. Mm, come on, somebody. Sometimes we get things out of source. We get things out of kelter this morning. But I'm talking about holding fast. Jesus said, I want, you to, I want you to follow. I want you to follow. I want you to cleave to me. I want you to diligently hearken. I want you to be obedient this morning. He says, we are not compromising our relationships. We're not compromising our behaviors or anything that might pull us away from a total commitment to God and complete obedience to his word. There's a lot of things that are just fighting for first place. There's a lot of things that is competing for what's most important in your life. There's a lot of things that's going, a lot of struggles out there. So Paul was, Paul was telling us in Hebrews, the third chapter, we're getting on over now. We're making some good progress here. In Hebrews, the third chapter, Verses 2, Hebrews 3 and verse 2. Paul is telling us here about the saving faith. He says, Who is faithful to him that appoint him as also Moses was faithful in all of his house? Church, we've got to be faithful in our house. It just doesn't happen at church. You can't be a Christian on Sunday and live like a heathen the rest of the week. Hello? Well, I go to church on Sunday, but I go to the, I, you know, Pastor, I don't drink. I just social sip. I'll go right along with that one. <clears throat> let it lay. <laughs> just let it lay right there. Let it soak in real good. Wow, I don't drink. I'm not a drinker. I'm not a but I, I socially sip. That's worth the seven again, isn't it? Whoo. I'm going to let it just lay a little bit longer. That feels pretty good. <laughs> Somebody needs to hear that this morning. Mm. Can't halfway serve God. There's a lot of interference running right up there. A lot of interference running for you. Paul said, Paul said, who was faithful to him that appointed him. As also Moses was faithful in all of his house. See, it just doesn't happen in church. You got to be faithful to him in the house. Faithful in your workplace. You can't be a, you can't believe one way at the church and another way in the world, folks. You've got to be a guiding light in whatever area your life is in. Amen. You gotta be, you gotta be steadfast. You gotta hold fast your faith, no matter what environment you're in, whatever circumstance you're in. This morning, he said, "He who hath built the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is built by the same man, but he that built all things is God." That's who I'm gonna cling to this morning. There's a lot of worldly things that's trying to come again, but I'm going to hold to God's unchanging hand this morning. So I'm going to believe in God. I'm going to trust in God. So Paul, so Paul was telling us here to stay steadfast, to stay steadfast, to hold on to what Christ is. He said in verse 12, take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you of an evil heart of unbelief in departing, in departing from the living God. I'm going to get a little bit bold. I'm going to be a little bit courageous. I might probably pretty go ahead and turn in my resignation papers. 
Just that way, I just won't, that way I won't get fired. <laughs> In Revelation chapters 2 and 3, John wrote a letter from God under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He wrote a letter to every church. In every church, he pointed out their issues. Some were, let Satan come in, had the spirit of Jezebel come in, let them be teachers in the church. And I mean, he pointed out different failures and different faults. And then he pointed to them, he said, but to those that overcome, I will give to their crown of life. He said, but if you've got a whole fast, let no man take your crown. So he gives some pros and cons to each one of those churches. Let me remind you of something this morning. You've got a heavenly father, and you've got a savior named Jesus Christ, and you've got the Holy Spirit this morning that is up here in the heavenlies that is watching over Yell Assembly of God, and they're watching everything that you're doing, and they're listening to everything that I say this morning, and it's being written down. They're acknowledging this church this morning. Just as they acknowledge the seven churches of Sardis and Ephesus and Thyatira, they acknowledge and they wrote it down. We're in the spotlight. We're in the scope of God Almighty this morning. And I'm wondering what he's writing about us. I was wondering what he's writing about me this morning. Woo! Kind of a scary thought. Sobering thought, yeah. But I'm wondering what he's writing about our church this morning. Is it a house full of steadfast, unmovable, born again believers? I read a, I read a uh, bumper sticker yesterday. I thought it was kind of good. I, on the back of it, it says, I'm a conservative, I'm a Christian, and I'm a gun owner. <laughs> Well, okay. <laughs> but you know, true, we've got to stand for something. If not, we'll fall for anything. We've got to have our feet rooted and grounded in what the Word of God is and what the knowledge of God is. But I say that to say this this morning. Because in the spite of everything that's going on, the church must remain true and faithful and steadfast without wavering, without moving in our lives. Amen. If it's recorded about Thyatira, what's being recorded about Yell Assembly? Because there's one church, he says, you are lukewarm. God help us this morning not to become a lukewarm because my fear is this. I believe there's too many people say, Pastor, don't use the word lukewarm. Don't use the term backslide this morning. Well, thank God I still can use the word. Some people are living on a slippery slope. Because if you say backslider, it might offend somebody. Well, I'm going to say this. There's too many people who are so-called Christians who are camping out on a slippery slope that are declining in their faith, that are declining in their faithfulness to God and dependence upon Him as Lord and Savior. You want my resignation now or later? I'm just getting warmed up. Because they're allowing, they're allowing the world and its voice to drown out the voice of God. Hello, folks. People are living on a slippery slope this morning. God has called us to a place of righteousness. He's called us to a place of holiness. He's called us to a place of purity. And he's called us to a place of separation. To a separation. We are not to blend in with the world. We're not to look like the world. We're definitely not to act like the world. But you got people in the church houses. You don't know if it's a church or just a big social worldly party going on. Right. Right. Woo, Lord. I, sometimes my, my, my son is real good about this. He'll show me, say, Dad, look what's going on at this church. And I want some good news. And I'm thinking, is that a church or is it a bar? Looks like it is something that's come out of the 70s having a disco party. Hello? When you can't distinguish between the church and the world, we got a problem. And so we see this where the, the, the world is drowning out the, the call of righteousness in our life, but the world is offering feel good, 
false hope, secure, empty security, empty, empty uh, 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 futures. His world is offering people nothing but vanity of vanities. The world is offering sex and drugs and, and alcohol and tobacco and, and cigarettes. Uh, I'm glad that Biden said we're going to do away with the menthol, but if it's going to do away with the menthol, just do away with all of it. I'll let that in lay too. Well, Pastor, I just don't see anything wrong with it. Uh, well, uh, who wants to smell like you've been to hell? Chewing tobacco. Resignation number two. <laughs> snuff. Every time I think of snuff, there was a little old lady living in my town when I was growing up as a kid. She dipped that old can snuff. She, she, she dipped that old can snuff. And she go to church on Sundays, and she had that stuff just running down her jaw just like that. I was like, Lord, have mercy. Who'd want to sit across the breakfast table from that every morning? <laughs> Say, come here, honey, I want a sugar today. <laughs> I'm just preaching this morning, church. Who in the right mind wants to kiss somebody who smells like they've been to a tobacco farm and they got tobacco juice running down their ju My Lord, my Lord. I'll give you a break. Not to mention gluttony this morning. <laughs> Come on. We're just having a good time in church today. <laughs> you want to feel good? We're going to make you feel good today. <laughs> Say, thank God he's leaving me alone and preaching about somebody else today. <laughs> we got all these issues that's going on. Oklahoma's the number one producer, number one growing marijuana. We're to put a state sign at the state line. Say, welcome to Oklahoma, the marijuana capital. We got problems, folks. We got problems. We got Hollywood. We got Governor Newsom that's trying to legalize abortion 30 days after the baby's already been born. Check it out. We got wokeism is on the rise. We got gay pride. We got homosexuality on the uprise. I mean, you can have a baby now. You pick a whatever gender you want it to be. If it's poking out, cut it off. If it ain't there, grow one on. <laughs> Folks, we're living in a sad society where we've gotten away from the Word of God. We're not holding fast to the truth that our forefathers founded the United States of America on because they were sick and tired of the government telling them what they could do or could not do. So a group of people said, we're going to go and we're going to start a nation whose builder and maker is God. Hallelujah! We got to be a steadfast people of the truth of my Lord, my Lord. Mm. Woo, my Lord. We got lies. We don't know if people are telling the truth or not. Yeah, you do. Their lips are moving. People are lying. People are lying about abortion, say it's okay. But you talk to that mama, it's going to have lasting effects on their mentality, on their emotions. You got school teachers, bless you, Brother Jim. Thank God. This man taught education, breathed education. He said that preachers and teachers are the same. I agree with him. That's how he felt about education. We had teachers that love to teach students uh, reading and writing and arithmetic. They taught them education, not orientation of the sexual desires of the gender. My God, we've come a long way. There used to be a boy's restroom and a girl's restroom, and people knew which one to use. We had teachers that was teaching arithmetic and reading and writing and accounting and typing, and now we got closed closets. That you can send your daughters and children to school. And when they get to school, they can change clothes. They can, boys can put on a dress. Come on, somebody. We're living in a sickening, perverted generation. We've gotten away from the whole fastness of the Word of God. We've gotten to the place where socialism and communism is coming over which we used to have democracy. 
We're teaching indoctrination. Well, I'm just getting warmed up, I'll tell you all that. When Noah got off the ark, one of the first things Noah did was went and built an altar. Church, if we're going to be steadfast, we got to get back to the altar of God. We got to get a hold of the four horns of the altar of God and begin to cry to him. He said, if my people, if my people, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek the face of God, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. But it's going to take God's people getting back to the place of the altar and repenting this morning. Repent is not an evil word. Repenting is a good word. Oh, you don't, you, I don't like when the pastor said repent. I Man, that's one of the best words you're going to hear all morning is to repent and get back to the presence of Almighty God. Get back into a relationship with Him. Because what we're seeing, what we're seeing is the church some attending the church are trying to have one foot in the church and trying to have one foot in the world and they're living on a and they're living and they're living on a slippery slope what we do is Jude Jude 1 and 23 look it up Jude 1 23 Watch this. Jude 1 and 23. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. I want to stay this right here. Have we forgotten how hot the flames and the fire is? Hello, church. Well, it's okay. You just, you just go ahead and shack up with somebody. It's okay. You go ahead and live a fornication lifestyle. You go ahead and live an adulterous lifestyle. The church, the pastor, he'll overlook it. Yeah, we may overlook it, but there's a God in heaven this morning that says it's adultery and it's a stench in the nostrils of Almighty God. Church, we've got to pull them out of the fire because the fires are hot and the flames are burning hot this morning. But if we don't know how hot they are, we don't have, well... It's not my, I don't want to get involved. I don't have any right. Let me tell you something this morning, church. I am the pastor of Yale Assembly of God. And if you're in attendance here, that makes it my business. And it makes it God's business this morning. And I have a right to preach what is written in this book this morning. Amen. You want resignation number three yet? You got the world. Some's in the world, some's in the church, half and half, some in, some out. But what you're happening is this. You've got people that are empty, you got people that are lonely, and you got people that are lost. Hello? You can't serve God and you can't serve mammon this morning. You've got people this morning that are living unrepentant lifestyles that are trying to fill their life with alternatives. I'm preaching, God, I'm going to start preaching here in a minute. And they're going to fill their lives with substitutes, with chemicals. They're going to fill their body with all kinds of piercing. Oh, if I can just get me a belly button ring, everything's going to be all right. Hello? Man, if I had about a half a dozen rings on my ear, if I had me a couple of nose rings right here. You know, we used to put, we used to put rings in hog noses. Get quiet in this third Presbyterian church. I saw a lady this week. I'm not being judgmental. I'm just, I'm just stating the facts. I saw a lady this week that I knew. When I saw her last, she had beautiful hair. I saw her the week she had it shaved and had a big old mohawk right down the middle. <laughs> to each their own. But the Bible says that the hair of the woman is her glory. And for the man to have long hair, it's a shame. I'm just preaching what the Word of God says. But you got people that says, boy, I'm going to get me some belly button rings. I'm going to get me some lip piercings right across. I'm even going to get my tongue pierced about three or four times. But wouldn't I look good up here preaching about three or four tongue rings? 
oh, preacher, no, preacher, you should. Well, if it's good for the goose, it ought to be good for the gander this morning. Well, the church, the church, the church is doing it. That, well, pastor, you can't, you're high on a pedestal. You're a man of God. You can't do that. Hello. Am I preaching or meddling? I don't know. I'm just caught in a moment here. I'm going to give me some piercing right up here in my lip. Right up here. Big spikes. <laughs> Big gold knobs. <laughs> Maybe it cause me to lose weight, you know, get all that jewelry in my mouth going on. Can't eat good. Hurt my gums. Scratch them all up. <laughs> Might be a good way to lose some weight. I don't know. <laughs> Say, Pastor, you're meddling. No. I'm just trying to tell you the fact there's a lot of people living on the slippery slope when God is telling us, come out from the world, be not among them, be not counted with them, be not a part of them, don't even look like the world and have the stench of the world upon them this morning. God is telling us not to blend in with the world, not to be camouflaged with the world, but to come out of the world and be separate. Well, it's our culture. I don't care what the culture says. Go back to the Word of God. He tells us to be moderately dressed. Hello. He tells us to be grave. He tells us to be sober. He tells the women in the church, the spiritual moms, to teach the younger women what it is to be modest. Say, honey, that's a pretty dress. Just don't bend over. Folks, you're, you know I'm not making any of this stuff up. You're hearing it and you're seeing it. You're seeing it on the workplace. Hello. So you got, you got, you got, you got, I'm still preaching here, resignation number four, in case you're wondering. I don't want to get fired, I'd just rather resign and. <laughs> but you got people, they're trying to fill the voids and the emptiness in their life with the body piercings, and if that won't cut it, take me to the tattoo parlor. I want to get me a picture right here, put mama on it. I know, I know, I love you guys. Appreciate your steadfastness, your boldness, your courage there. Amen. Love you guys. Thank y'all. The doors are closed after this. <laughs> the doors are locked. You can't leave till they're finished. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm thinking about this. You know, I get to spend a lot of time driving, so I'm thinking a lot of stuff driving down the road. I'm thinking, you know, we're, we're struggling putting food on the table but we can scrounge up enough money to go to a tattoo parlor and put Mary right there. <laughs> Mary's been married, Mary's been, Mary has been married so many times she's got rice marks on her face. <laughs> Jesus said, I know you've been married five, six, seven times, and the guy you're living with, he ain't your husband either. She was unhappy, folks. There's a lot of people that are trying to profess to be Christians that are not Christians. They're not looking, just judge them by their fruit. The fruit, what you did before you got saved is your bit, honey. But once you come to Christ, you're not the old man you used to be. You've been a new creature. You've been born again. You've been regenerated. You've been washed in the blood of Jesus. He has purified your mind, renewed your mind, renewed your heart. Don't resort back to the old ways. Oh, Galatians, who has bewitched you that you would turn from God and go back to the vomit and go back to the sow wallering in a hog waller. Church, God has called us out of that lifestyle. But there's people in churches today that are resorting back and are going back to this place trying to fulfill and to fill the appetite and the lust of the flesh. Satan is working Satan is lying and Satan is blinding. The, Satan could care less about the world. But he's after the church to steal your faith. 
He's after the church to rob you of your peace, to rob you of your joy. And he can, if he can do anything to tempt you, to get you persuaded, to go back and to look like the world, to act like the world, to steal and rob your worship of God, to give it to him, that's what he's going to do. I'm showing you a bunch of examples. I know I am this morning. I went way out on a limb this morning. I understand that. But Satan is blinding the thoughts. He's blinding the acts. The highest number of suicides are today. The highest recorded number of suicides is today, folks. They're blaming it on this. They're blaming it on that. But the real problem is people are living in sin. And sin is the disease and sin is the enemy this morning that is destroying young men and young women's wives. It, it, it's a horrible thing. I work in a funeral home. Some of you know, some of you don't know. We get calls periodically. Most time when you go to a funeral, nobody knows because nobody says anything. You don't know the behind the scenes stories of what happened. But most of the time we do. And we see the results. It's horrifying. And there's all those saying is there's some things you just don't talk about. But when you hear stories how, how the husband comes in and pulls a gun and shoots his wife and shoots his two daughters. Or a husband comes to the door and he pulls a butcher knife and he butchers his four-year-old girl and he butchers his two-year-old son and he kills his wife because she's running for help. Folks, we're living in treacherous times today. And it goes back to the church of being steadfast, unshakable, and unmovable, having a relationship with God and still crying out and reaching the lost, having God has given us the great commission to shine his light in a darkened world. We, how are we going to win the world if we're looking like the world? How are we going to win the lost if we're acting like the lost? God has called us to be separate. God has called us to the place this morning to where we've got to be. When you look in, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to wrap up. Oh, Lord, I've already preached too long this morning. Romans Romans, the first chapter, I'll wrap it up right here. Romans, the first chapter, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Let me tell you, the power of God's at work, church. Hello. I said the Spirit of God is at work. We just got to hear his voice. We just got to heed to the voice. He said, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just, the just shall live by faith. Folks, if we're going to be steadfast, we've got to be faithful. We've got to be faithful. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and against all unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. There's some that are just that we don't we, we, we don't want to know it. We don't want to live by it. We're going to reject it. We don't want we're going to suppress it. Kind of like they did during the COVID. The church is not essential. We're just going to have all the churches shut down. But they couldn't get it done because they said, if it be of God, you cannot stop it. If it be not of God, it'll come to naught. But if it be of God, you can't stop it. They've been trying to suppress the church for thousands of years. But the Yellow Assembly, along with the other churches, we're still moving right along. Why? Because we're steadfast. We're going to hold fast. We're going to stay true. We're going to live a pure life. We're going to live a life of holiness and righteousness in a corrupt and perverted world. We're going to shine his light. God has called us to be salt and light. We cannot afford to lose the saltiness. Hello. We cannot afford to lose the saltiness of our flavor this morning because it's the salt that preserves. It's the salt that decays the slowing down of the rottenness today. As long as the church is still here, we got opportunity to reach the hurting, to reach the law, to them that are that are that are that are filling their body with chemicals and who believe the lie. There is no hope for them. We got to understand this morning. He says, 
he goes on to say there, he said, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but they become vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Folks, there's a lot of foolish hearts that are darkened by sin, that are darkened this morning, that have been compromised. And this message this morning, I, I know it's, It's way out. I, I understand that. We've laughed, and but folks, this is some serious stuff this morning. Very serious stuff this morning. It's real. It's real, and it's you know, growing up as a growing up as a as a kid, we lived in a town about three hundred, including cats and dogs. And I thought, me being in a small town, I'll never see this stuff. It'll be it'll happen in a big city. You'll see it in New York and Chicago and L.A. and San Francisco. But let me tell you something, the church. It's real in Yale, Oklahoma. It's real in Jennings, Oklahoma, and Rip and Olton, the surrounding areas. With this is the environment that we're living in. We've got to be steadfast in our faith with God this morning. When He comes, when Jesus comes, will He find faith upon the earth? He better find faith. Father, we love you this morning. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord, that is at work. Lord, that is at work in our hearts, that is at work in our lives today. Lord, you're calling us. Lord, you're calling us out of the world. You're calling us to be separated from the world, to live a life of holiness, to live a life of purity. Lord, to live a life of righteousness before you, Lord, to be, a, to be blameless. In a corrupt generation. God help us to save ourselves from this untoward generation. Lord, we would ask this morning that you would guide our hearts. Lord, guide our hearts into all truth. Lead us not into temptation. Lord, but deliver us from all evil this morning. Father, we ask that you order our steps today that will not want to wander back to the world, that will not want to wander off track, Lord, that will not want to wander back to the, to the backslidden condition, but God, that we will stay focused. Lord, just like the man at Gate Beautiful, he fastened his eyes upon Peter and John. God, help us to fasten our eyes upon you, Lord, and continue thou in the things that we have learned. God, we would ask that you renew our hearts and renew our minds this morning. Lord, that we would not waver. Lord, that we would not bend. Lord, that we would not compromise. Lord, that we would not give in to the lust and the pride of life today. Father, I ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, to Lord, to come this morning and meet us here at this altar. Lord, to meet us here in this house today. Father, we welcome your Holy Spirit to say, come, Lord, because you say, whosoever will, let him come. Lord, you're crying out today. The spirit and the bride say, come. And Jesus says, come unto me. All ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly, and you shall find rest for your soul. If your soul is restless here this morning. If your soul is in a restless state and if you're bound by confusion, if you're bound by, by these issues that I've talked about watching my internet this morning, if you're being confused, and come to Jesus. Come to Jesus this morning. Come to him. Come to him and he will give you rest. It will calm your weary soul this morning. He'll calm your, your mind that's been that's being a re, 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 your mind that's being confused. He'll bring restoration this morning. If your family's in trouble, bring it to the altar of God this morning. If your children's in trouble this morning, bring them to the altar, church. This is the answer. This is the answer. This is the hope that we have in Jesus. All the world can offer you is just temporary, temporary false hope. It's all they can offer you. But Christ can give you everlasting life. He can give you everlasting peace, everlasting joy this morning. I'm going to open up these altars today, folks. Bring your, bring your sins. Bring your chaotic life. Bring your life this morning that's confused. Bring your life, it's rocky this morning. 
or bring your life that is pure and holy and say, God, I just want to be used. And Lord, I want to do much more for the kingdom of God. There's no reason why we can't fill these altars this morning. There's no reason why we can't when things are competing for Christ being number one in your life. Is it your job? Is your job competing for you? Is it sports? Is sports competing for the number one position in your life? Is it greed? Is it, is it more money? It's competing for the number one in your life. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Church, that's got to be our first priority this morning. Our first priority must be seeking God and his kingdom today. If that's out of alignment, then we need to come to this altar this morning and say, God, I will come and I repent. Lord, for what I've made it. As people are coming right now, there's still room this morning. There's still room. If, we've got, if you've got sons and daughters that don't know Jesus, you are to be in this altar crying out for them, standing in the gap for them. You've got friends and neighbors and co-workers. Remember how hot the fire is. Remember how hot the flame is. And let us pull them out of the fire this morning. Hating even the garment spotted by sin. Glory. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it, church. Just keep crying out to him. Run to this altar. Run to the mercy seat this morning. Run to the mercy seat where there's grace. Run to the mercy seat where there's salvation. Lord, that healing. Lord, that healing power. Lord, that healing virtue this morning. Woo, show me to be the God. Father, we lay it off the altar. Lord, we bring it to the altar, and we're going to leave it at the altar. Lord, we're bringing it. We're going to leave it. We're bringing it. We're going to leave it. We're bringing it. We're going to leave it here, Lord. We're going to leave it here this morning, Lord. Glory be to God. We come, Lord, crying out, Lord. Glory be to God.
praise this morning. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Do you know him today? Please don't turn him away. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my. love you this morning. Father, we thank you for loving us. Lord, when we were sinners is when you died for us. Lord, you said the just for the unjust. Father, you gave your life a ransom for many. Father, today, Lord, we are, we are so grateful, Lord, and we're thankful, Father, that you've allowed us Lord, to come as heathens. Lord, to come as Gentile nations. Lord, to become the children of God today. Father, we're so grateful. Lord, we thank you. Lord, help us to stand true. Lord, and to stay faithful this morning, Lord. Lord, and to stay true to your word of God. Lord, to follow your word's example today. Lord, by being followers of God. Living for you, Lord. Dedicated lives. Dedicated lifestyles. Lord, that is pleasing unto you. Father, we thank you this morning for your boundless, endless love that you have displayed and shown to us. Lord, we give you the praise for us as you keep us by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, I want you to know that I love you. I love you so much. You're the joy and you're my crown today. And I'm looking forward to spending eternity with all of you. I want to be so proud then we all, when he calls our, we're probably last in line being yell. <laughs> if he goes in alphabetical order, we'll be one of the last ones. <laughs> but when he calls, I want to see you and your family there, church. Amen. Whatever order we're going to be in, folks, I want to see yell assembly there. Amen. I want him, and I want him to say, well done. Well done. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Praise God. Praise God. The best is yet to come, folks. We're not going to look like the world. We're not going to act like the world, but we're going to look like and act like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Brother, Brother Jim, would you dismiss us in prayer, brother? Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and get acquainted with our guests this morning. Tell them that you're glad to have them today. Lord bless you. Lord love you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.